Hello and welcome to another video. This is CT Tech Gaming and I'm going to help you fix the issue of the flaps, lift, floating and all that kind of problems when it comes to the latest World Update 3 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now this is the update which was the UK update but it seems to have brought in another bug whereas when you're trying to land, whenever you put the flaps on the lift you get is ridiculously over the top to the point where it can literally on takeoff you suddenly almost go vertically up or on landing it will make you float for so long and you just can't get the bird down so I'm going to show you basically an example of what happens and also how to fix it so at the moment we're in the TBM mainly because it's a very good aircraft to kind of show the effects and I'm just turning around to go on an approach for Birmingham International now we're, we're turning it round we're going to put, pull in for the approach and then what will happen is, as I put the flaps in, you'll see the lift it creates is ridiculously over the top. I'll then cut to the, a takeoff from Norwich, where you basically see me go ridiculously high up. This isn't going to be a tutorial on how to land, and it's not even going to be a clean landing. It is literally just there to show you the effects of what happens when you're doing the actual approach. Okay. So as you can see, we're going around. I'm going to put the landing lights on, although it's not tutorial. Kind of just a little bit of a habit. If I want, if I'm going to do it, try and do it with a sense of professionalism. Now I've cut. Unfortunately, it, um, I've got too much speed, but it will still give you the example of what happens that when I put flaps on. If I put flaps to take off, you'll see instantly I'm shooting straight up. I know I'm going fast. But I'm almost getting to the point of it being too much now. I've got to really push down. Now, I should point out that I've got all stresses and everything turned off for this video, mainly because I had noticed sometimes as soon as I put the flaps on, it would put it would give me the screen of you have overstressed the aircraft. Okay, so now we're at Norwich International Airport. I've got the aircraft set up for takeoff, and we're going to do a quick takeoff from the runway, and I'm going to show you the effects it has even when you're taking off. Now normally it should glide off and then it should take a nice steady kind of ascent but with the current dynamics what happens is the plane will take off and then slowly start lifting up and then increase it to the point where it tries to almost go vertical um, and to the point of stall and no matter how much you try and change the trim it won't change it nor should you have to change it to the amount that you'd need to to try and counteract it. As soon as I turn the flaps off it acts as you would expect it to, but as soon as I click the flaps back on, you'll see it suddenly starts climbing again. So what I'm going to do is show you how it should react and how to fix it so it works as you would expect it to. So what I'm going to do now is go through what you need to do to get the actual aircraft to react as it used to and as you would expect it to. In this example we're using a TBM, but this will work with any aircraft that you're having any excessive climbing or floating when landing and it's kind of reacting differently to how it used to since the latest update. So I'm going to show you a step by step on how to get this sorted for you. First thing is go into your Microsoft local cash packages folder. Now if it's done direct from Microsoft, this is kind of how it would go. You'd go into your users, whatever your username is, app data, local, packages, flight simulator, local cache, and then into local cache packages. Yep, so that's kind of like the um, path to get to it. Okay, now within there, you've got community and official. If you've got any downloaded aircraft, um, then you go into the community folder and then find the aircraft in there. You'll find it the exact same way as I'm about to show you for the TBM, but it'll just be in the community folder. Now, if you're using the fly-by-wire mod, that has already been updated. So if you go to the latest update, either through their installer or direct from their Discord or their GitHub, depending on which way you've downloaded it, you should see there's a new version in there and they have automatically counteracted the effects through their update. So give that a go, okay? Now, for me, I'm looking at the TBM in particular as per the video you saw. So I'll go into official and into one store. Now, for any of the aircraft you're looking for, you're looking for a Sobo Dash aircraft. You're not interested in airport, bush trips, flight um, tutorials, or landing challenges, any of that. You just want the aircraft because it's the dynamics for the aircraft that you're looking for. In this case, go to TBM, say 930. Go into the Sim Objects, Aeroplanes, 
and then you'll see when it says TBM 930. In some occasions, you might find two folders. You want one which basically just says the plane identifier. If it's got something like uh, plane, if it says like TBM dash liveries or something else like that, you're not interested in that. You want just the main one, like it says there, for instance. Click on that, and you're looking for the flight model dot config. Okay, now. What you can do, mine is already set to open up a notepad. If yours isn't, if you right click on it, you can do open with, search more apps, and you're looking for notepad. So you click on notepad. You can either have that ticked or not. I've kept it ticked because any configs I go into, I want to open with notepad, so I've kept it ticked. Okay. Um, so if I double click on it, it will open up the notepad, and this is what you're introduced with. Now, when you look at that, it looks quite daunting. But don't let it put you off, it's fine. We can easily, I'm gonna show you how to find the bits you're looking for. Do control F, make sure the direction is down and you want flaps. If you click flaps and then to keep searching, what you're looking for is the lift coefficient flaps. Now you can see on mine, it says 1.0321. What you wanna do is go into calculator you can, if you can do it in your head, do it in your head. But for the sake of showing people how what I'm doing, I'm using the calculator to help them physically see it on the screen. And then what you're doing is dividing by 2. So 0 0.51605 is what I want. So I'm going to go on here and put 0 0.51605. Oh, and then the next one you want is left underscore scalar like that. Find that and you're looking for the lift scaler as it shows there okay now you can see this is 1.64 so what you want to do again is 1.64 divided by 2 0 0.825 so that's what we're going to be putting in here and once you've done that you can just save it and then close it what I always recommend doing before you change any of these files is on your desktop, maybe do a folder. Let's say if I go to my desktop and then do a folder, create new folder, MSFS flight models, go in. And then if you can either create another folder for the plane and do say TBM, and then what I would do and then what I would do is I'll go to my flight and then just right click copy and then put paste it in there. Now the reason for this, that's fine. Just if you can't come up with this, just click yes. Now the reason I do this is so if for whatever reason it doesn't work I can then just copy this back into that folder and there you go you've reverted any of the inf anything that you've done just in case you do change it wrong always make a backup in case it doesn't work something goes wrong you've, you can just put it back to exactly what it is I haven't done it with this particular one because I know exactly what I've changed what I've changed it to so I can easily um, just go back and change it back okay so, but that's essentially how you would change it. Again, if you wanted to do it for another aircraft, I can go back to one store, go into any of the other planes, let's say for whatever reason, the Savage Cub, let's say that was playing up. I'm not gonna change this one because I haven't tested it yet, so I don't know if this has been affected. But again, I can go into Fly Models, Control F, Lift Scaler, find that, that's at one. If it's at one, I'd probably leave that. It probably sounds about right because the having that 0.5, you could do 0.5, you could try it. Part of it's a bit of trial and error as well, but I'd probably leave that. I'm going to search up because I know the one I want is above it. And lift coefficient. Now, 3.21, that sounds about right to me. You might say otherwise. Again, I haven't tested this aircraft yet, so I don't know. But if you if you normally fly the Savage Cub and you're finding now it's lifting ridiculously too high again, do the exact same things. Half the lift coefficient, half the lift scaler, and then that should fix it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen up um, Microsoft Flight Simulator and we're going to test it and see how it works. 
Okay, so we're now back in Microsoft Flight Simulator. We're back at Norwich International Airport, which is where we did the first test. It's a little bit later in the day, so the sun is setting, but the actual weather scenario is the same, so you shouldn't see any difference in that. The aircraft is set for takeoff, as you can see there, and it is now prepped and ready. So what we're going to do, I'm going to turn this off because for some reason it always gives you that little warning and it puts it on automatically. But what we're going to do is now try a takeoff and see how it reacts when in comparison to what it was before during a takeoff and see if now the little changes we've done to the file has made any difference at all. Okay, so we're now just getting ourselves up to speed, ready to take off, and then what I'm going to do is pull back on the stick and see how it reacts. Okay, so we're off the ground now. I'm going to let go of the flight stick, and as you can see now, the aircraft is reacting as you would expect it to during a takeoff. It's no longer trying to reach for the heavens, and it is now taking off in a more natural position. Now that we're speeding up over the flaps, you can see it is starting to climb, but then that would be expected because as I'm picking up speed, now it's creating more lift and I don't need the flaps anymore. But the just standard takeoff is now reacting as it should do, and we're not getting the excessive lift anymore. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take us to the landing side of it, and we're going to have a look and see how that reacts and see if the same calculations as now stopped it from floating a little bit too excessively as well. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're now on an approach for Birmingham International, same as before. And what we're going to do is test out the new formula and see if the flaps work better on the landing as well. There's the airport there. You can now hear that I've initiated the flaps. And you can tell that the lift now is no longer trying to send us up to the skies again. We are still getting the effect from the flaps, but it is no longer now forcing us to go ridiculously high now this isn't a landing tutorial so I'm not actually going to try and do a proper landing here I'm just trying to get us down just to kind of show how well the float is now so you can see I'm actually too low at this stage but this is just because I'm concentrating more on seeing how the lift reacts and me and how much I have to push down to counteract it but it's reacting a lot more naturally now and if I now cut the power because of the speed we're picking up for some reason we had a bit of a frame drop here, I think it's because I forgot to overclock my CPU before starting the simulator because I did an update. But we're coming in, the frames will suddenly smooth out which they've done now and as you can see we're not really floating, I've lifted up, we're not floating and we just have a nice little touchdown. So then I can stop the plane and the landing now feels a lot more natural, a lot better and no more of the kind of float floating or excessive lift that we were getting previously. This has been my video on Microsoft Flight Simulator and how to fix the flight dynamics since the World Update 3 which is the UK patch which has recently ported in a little bug to the simulator. If you found it useful or helpful then please feel free to like the video and I will be doing more tutorials and more kind of little tips for Microsoft Flight Simulator so if that interests you as well get the bell on and then it will notify you when I do upload a video. I've been CT Tech Gaming and I'll catch you guys next time.